Glen Gap Guesthouse, sponsors of BRTV's music show. The Glen Gap Guesthouse, multi award winning B&B, Dundalk County Loud, a little piece of countryside in the heart of the town. The Glen Gap Guesthouse, sponsors of BRTV's music show. And welcome to The Music Show on Border Region TV. I'm your host, Helena Mullins, and here today for our first music show, we have a very talented musician who has been playing music since he was in nappies. It's Sean Conway. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, so if you'd like to tell us a little bit about how your love of music started. Well, um, I suppose it was just, uh, we always had a piano in our house at home and um, I would have discovered it, as you say, when I was very, very young. <laughs> and so I would only have been a, 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 a wee gassing. And I, I, I uh, would have gone up to the piano and just sat up and started playing the one note with the one finger. And then I would uh, try and find another note that would match, kind of make a wee uh, rudimentary chord and just like bash away at it. And then like do, do, do it again and again and again. And I suppose my family then picked up on, on my love of, of music that I was just very enthusiastic about it, I suppose. And so they started uh, like teaching me tin whistle and sending me for piano lessons and all that sort of stuff. It was mostly the piano and the whistle that kind of started it all off. And then uh, as I kind of progressed through doing my classical grades and, and entering flas and stuff like that in the traditional side of it, uh, I started playing guitar, I'd say, first when I was about 10. And then when I, whenever I was 15 then, because I wasn't really getting on that well on the guitar for a long time, uh, after I started learning it and so I'd say by the time I was 15 I was kind of getting a bit frustrated with with that side of things and then my friend showed me there was a different way of like tuning the guitar so like changing the notes changing the strings into like a completely new sound and it's called a uh, dad gad tuning and I suppose that whenever I I um I started experimenting with that and learning all about it that's really where my love of of, of guitar playing began and probably uh, for people who don't understand a lot about music, maybe dadgad, is that how I pronounce it? I don't yeah. know if I pronounce it right, but uh, what would that mean? Would be the scales would be different on the... Well, it just means that, um, first of all, it's lower. So, like, the lowest string on the, on the acoustic guitar would be a low E. And uh, so that goes down to a D, which is a note below E. So that means it gives, us, it gives the whole guitar... The whole guitar kind of shifts down one kind of tone. And then it just gives it a, a big, rich sound. Um, actually, the tuning that I have it in, because I, I, uh, I, um, I've since used a lot of different tunings, and the tuning that I have that in now is in C. It's a C tuning. So that's like a long ways down from where normal guitar tuning would be. And it just gives it this massive sound, no matter what size. Like, that's only a little guitar, you know, but it just makes it r so rich and, and, and ringy and lovely, like. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, also maybe uh, you have a very exciting gig coming up uh, mm. with your album launch on the 14th of December in the Spirit Store. But maybe uh, what uh, artists, past or present, have inspired uh, your music to date? Uh, well, there's a, a wide range of artists, I would say, but uh, just for, the, for what I'm doing now, I suppose it would be people like Nick Drake, a guitar player from the 70s, who would have uh, used so many different alternate tunings. It was him that I did my dissertation on in college, and I wrote a load of songs in all of his tunings, and they're like basically make up the bulk of the album. And then there'd be people like uh, Bert uh, Jansch and um, John Martin, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, those kind of older people, you know. And then uh, from today's music, it would probably be people like Radiohead and Supergrass and um, Elliot Smith, Sofian Stevens, people like that. Cool, cool. And also, uh, I'm sure that all your time is consumed with this uh, album launch, but what can we look forward to maybe in the future? Uh, I know that you're just fresh out of college as well, just graduated, so congrats on that. Thanks very much. So uh, what do you hope to do maybe? Uh, what's your future aspirations? 
Um, well, I, I'd like to branch out into into. See, I I, I love doing uh, folk music and folk guitar. I really do. It's it's one of my passions. But I would also like to you know play some traditional music on the guitar because I I've I've spent a lot of time you know getting good at that I suppose. And uh, I'd like to do some contemporary classical composition as well. So like you know for film scores and for uh, uh, string quartets and stuff like that. Kind of new age classical music. And then uh, I'd also suppose like to do something electrical based, kind of like uh, you know electric guitars, basses, kind of like a uh, Radiohead or something like that. Be be cool to try. Cool, a uh, wide spectrum of uh, jobs in hand there <laughs> yeah. for New Year. And uh, where can we find out more about your music? Maybe uh, to date or like in the next couple of weeks, where can we find out more about yourself? Well, uh, I've got some SoundCloud links up on Facebook and I have a music page, uh, Sean Conway. Just search that on Facebook and you'll find me. So uh, tell us a little about uh, the Christmas song uh, that you hope to be your single now for this album launch, Mm. uh, Christmas Tree. Uh, Would you like to tell us a little bit about that before you play it exclusively for Border Region TV? Well, uh, I just kind of had an idea that um, I I didn't think that there had been that many acoustic Christmas songs, you know, just and uh, especially not ones that are, you know, kind of very intricate and stuff like that. Um, there's actually a, a very good one I just saw recently uh, by I think they're called Paper Clips, and uh, I saw them on the Late Late Show, and they did one about uh, called Flying with the Snowman, which is great. People should look that up. But um, I, apart from that, I hadn't really seen any acoustic. Christmas songs and especially not ones with kind of finger picking style or anything like that so I just thought that I would try and write a Christmas song in the style of of people who I love like Nick Drake and that's kind of where it came from I suppose. So here we have it folks it's Christmas Tree with Sean Conway.
a little piece of countryside in the heart of the town. The Glen Gap Guest House, sponsors of BRTV's music show. A little piece of countryside in the heart of the town. The Glen Gap Guest House. Sponsors of BRTV's music show. Welcome back to the music show on Border Region TV. And thanks very much to Sean Conway for being with us on the first half of the show. But now we have a singer-songwriter who left her secure teaching job to follow her dreams and hasn't looked back since. Most recently, her Christmas single has been described as better than band aid by presenter Barbara Scully. Here we have Sinead McNally joined us on Border Region TV. Thanks so much for coming on. No problem. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks. Cool. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about um, Nearly Christmas and how it came about. Sure. Yeah. Nearly Christmas was um, a very unexpected uh, a song that I put together when I was teaching in school in um, St Oliver Plunkett's in Black Rock just outside Dundalk and the Christmas concert was coming up I was teaching second class at the time and the principal knocked on my door and he said um, you know you have to do something for the Christmas concert this year and I was like yeah yeah like I'm thinking maybe nativity or something like that and he said no something completely different so I thought okay so we were going to obviously learn some Christmas songs and then I decided being a songwriter I thought well maybe it's time to write a Christmas song and I actually did uh, spend probably about three weeks gathering some ideas with the kids and the song came together in the classroom so yeah brilliant and uh, this isn't the first recording you had a uh, recording last year and you had mm. the album launch mm. the the was electric in the spirit yeah. store i have to say yeah. but uh tell us about the new revamped uh video that you have with sure. nc kids yes sure well basically yeah the song was recorded like obviously the very first year um that i had the kids singing it. it was such a basic recording and then last year was kind of the first proper professional recording of it um and it went very well but my vocals featured on it and it went under the name of nearly christmas by sinead mcnally i did have children singing on it with me and it was a lovely absolutely great version of the song but Throughout the last year, I, I got some advice, I guess, and I went to some songwriter, work, songwriter workshops and I met with some kind of hit songwriters and discussed the song and really talked about what, what changes could be made um, to really make a final edit of it. So the advice came back. There wasn't a huge amount of change. We beefed it up, I suppose. It's a little more Christmassy. A couple of the words changed. And then the big key idea was to actually take my vocals off it, kind of step back and allow a child to sing the lead vocals, which I was absolutely delighted about when I discovered a local girl called Nisha Dernan and she stepped into the studio and we re-recorded it and it now is kind of like I say bigger and that's the final edit of those so it's done now it won't be re-recorded ever again but now the video as well is all comes under the heading of the NC kids and it includes up to about 50 local children as well so it's good fun. Brilliant, brilliant. So definitely putting County Loud on the map anyway. Yes. <laughs> well, we've Counties Loud, Meath and Down covered in terms of the wow. video. So that's good. Do you know what I mean? Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, also maybe to go back to more your serious music, maybe yeah. uh, less Christmassy. Yeah. Uh, you do cover quite a broad range of emotions and things like that. But yeah. what inspires you maybe to write uh, your wonderful music? Well, I guess like that, yeah, emotionally, you know, obviously when events in your life occur, you know, I find music for me is a little bit like therapy. So it's rather than maybe discuss, we all discuss our, our bits and pieces and uh, emotions with people. But I find for me, it's a particularly good way to do is to go in and sit at the piano and to maybe find a musical feature or like a melody that kind of represents that emotion and it helps me to deal with it. And then at the same time, Lately, I've been writing to brief, which is kind of something I've not done before, where maybe someone has come to me with a brief and said, we want you to do X, Y and Z, you know, and then I've had to really deliberately write. And I didn't think I would be that great. You know, I was nervous about it and it's worked so far. So the briefs that I've got have kind of um, been, I suppose, have achieved them. So I'm, I'm excited about writing to brief, but also um, the emotions, you know, when they're there, it's, it's good to be able to sit at the piano and write about them. Yeah. 
Well, also as regards the NC Kids, you have a new website yeah. for teachers resources tell us a little bit about that yeah I guess um I always wanted the song to be more than the song if you know what I mean if that makes sense it's great to have a song but for me I suppose there was all the fact that children just latched onto it I thought well there must be something in this and then I thought about I suppose as a, thinking from a teacher's point of view I was going wouldn't it be great if the song wasn't just something that you could listen to but it was also something that maybe you could do activities from so <laughs> got my teacher's hat and put it back on and uh, sat down and felt like I was back in the classroom and I I put together like I say the website and the website is www.nearlychristmaskids.com and on there there's a section and um, there's a little cracker and when you click on the cracker it takes you to some resources and the resources basically feature a couple of activities for kids like a word search and then there's some ideas for teachers of how they could use a song in a classroom setting but not necessarily you know they don't have to learn the song it can be used maybe for a dance activity or a literacy activity where they read and they have to replace certain words within the song so like yeah I, I definitely feel it's, a, it's an element it's, it's still in its very early stages but I'd love to really build on the resource aspect of it and one thing I really want to mention that I particularly love about the website is that there is a section called Acts of Love and what it is is that um, the kids click on this Acts of Love and it lists things that children can do kind of for each other like things like donate maybe um, a little toy to charity or something like that that they might have um, an old toy um, and I know a lot of schools do that anyway but then under that simple things like leaving a note for maybe your mom or your dad just to say to them you know you look lovely today or I really appreciate all you do for me so I'm loving that section because kids are having a lot of fun looking at it and finding ways that they can actually be kind to one another and I suppose just do something it's nothing to do with the song but for me it's important to have that educational space where it's positive and it's a community and they can come together and just you know enjoy the kind of all the Christmas element of it and then the activities as well. That is fantastic and there's also uh what you're encouraging as well you were telling me about for the interview um about kids that are able to do a recording of yeah. the song so tell us yeah. how can people yeah. get their recording into your sure songs? yeah this is something that's again really important to me i love hearing cover versions of songs and i love last year one thing that struck me a lot of teachers got in touch with me and said oh I did the song with my children this year and I oh, the thing that obviously I thought that was amazing but I was just nearly like I can't believe I, ca I can't get to see them do you know what I mean I'd love to have seen that and then some of them said well we'll send you a little clip of it or whatever which is great or some photos so this year I've incorporated a little aspect whereby all children p teachers parents whether you're on your own or in a group of kids you're more than welcome to kind of like say for example take the back and track and um, it's up on iTunes anyway there's no vocals on it so you can sing it okay and let's say for example you're in your classroom or at home you could do a little version of the song have it filmed or even just photographed if you don't want to actually film it photograph it and send it to nearlychristmaskids at gmail.com and we will then in turn upload any images or media onto the YouTube channel so that it becomes again like that community where you can watch I'd love to see it in Irish I'd love to hear it in kind of uh, different languages and native dress from around the world so again it'll take time to build but hopefully that channel will grow yeah Fantastic, fantastic. And also you, you do, uh, being from a teacher's background, I suppose, uh, you have a good head on your shoulders and you do an awful <laughs> lot of your own PR work. You do yeah. a lot of your own PR work. And um, also you've been on Ireland, a, uh, or Morning Ireland, sorry, yeah. and a lot of other um, media outlets yeah. promoting your work and your passion. Yeah. So tell us maybe what has been the highlight of your career to date? Wow, that's that's tough because sometimes I forget to sit and look back because you're so busy looking forward all the time. But I guess it's been... It is, the, like, I, I know it sounds very cliche, but it is the likes of, um, okay, there's big moments when you get national TV or the national radio. That there, you know, nothing beats turning on the radio and hearing a song. Like, I think that's where your outlet is. That's your supermarket shelves, as I call them. Like, you want to hear it up there. And obviously, it returns a little bit of revenue, too. So it's exciting. So I would call that a kind of a, very much a highlight and I suppose, the business end of it and hearing your music kind of... Um, like I say being broadcast to an audience but really I think what it comes down to and this is where I think the stem of it all is is when you get a call like that or a random text or a message through Facebook or whatever however way it comes from somebody saying like my child got up at six o'clock this morning and will not stop singing this song or even if it's an adult I cannot stop listening to such and such a song like it's helped me get through either whether it's a bereavement or just get through a happy time in their life do you know what I mean so that I think when people come back and say their music has got your music has got into their skin that's definitely 
there's nothing yeah. that beats so that's it's a what personal to. touch mm, that yeah. people get definitely yeah. and I love uh, a lot of your stuff is kind of like really upbeat mm-hmm. and then also you do cover like some yeah. serious issues like depression and things like yes, that so yeah. definitely there's ma- many emotions that people mm-hmm. can relate to in your yeah. music so maybe in the next couple of weeks or next coming months what can we look forward to seeing from you Sinead? Yeah well I like I say I've kind of stepped back this year and I've been very busy working behind the scenes on projects like Nearly Christmas but I have been writing yeah and definitely my writing has matured and I I'm absolutely mad to get another EP out because it's been two years since I've actually released my own EP. So absolutely, definitely, about this time next year, I hope we're having the same conversation with a nice EP featuring hopefully five or six tracks that are like, you know, like say a little bit more mature, covering a lot of happy and sad emotions, I'm sure. But yes, a a new EP is definitely on the cards. I'm, I'm kind of buzzing now to get another one and get my own stuff out there again. Brilliant, brilliant. And maybe what's the best way to find out more? You did mention mm-hmm. your uh, nearly Christmas kids dot com website. Yeah. So um, tell us what's how, how best to find you on the web and your sure. music. Yeah, well, I do have my own website as well. So that's just www.sineadmcnally.com. So you can find me on that. You can email me through that and subscribe as well to the channel. Um, pretty much like the good thing about Google Light is you can type in your name and find your Facebook page, your Twitter, all those sort of outlets. I'm quite easy to get hold of as well. I'll, I'll, I'll not give out my phone number, but my email address, uh, like I say, is on the website. And um, it's just Sinead at SineadMcNally.com as well. So that would be great if people got in touch. Thanks very much to Sinead McNally for coming on Border Region TV with us. Now, up next, we'll take a look at Nearly Christmas single performed by NC Kids. I hope you enjoy and thanks for watching. Can you feel it? It's nearly here now. It's nearly Christmas time. The stars are brighter. The Santa's journey is getting red.
the Glen Gap guest has multi award winning B&B Dundalk County Loud a little piece of countryside in the heart of the town the Glen Gap guest house sponsors of BRTV's music show 